What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the October 10th Chaos Community Metrics call. Um, minutes are in the chat. It's great to have you here. A couple of things. Important question for today is when does your weekend start? Friday evening. That's good. Thursday, <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> How about Tuesday? I'm done. I feel that sometimes. Night. I, I do. <laughs> I just don't want to engage. So <laughs> <laughs> love it. All right. So there um I'd like to bring some things up to this group here in this metrics meeting. Um, so we there's been some discussions kind of in calls. And also I feel a bit out of band sometimes, which is fine, um, about the metrics that we have. And so at the moment we have, I don't know, say 90 to 95 metrics. And um, Peculiar and Yiga are kind of going through and updating these new metrics to the new templates, which I think I was chatting just with Elizabeth. I think that can probably just continue to proceed at this point. Um, but as this is being done, Elizabeth and I are going back through the pull requests on that new template and just using it as an opportunity to take a look at the metrics themselves and kind of reflect on the writing that's in the metric, the clarity of the metric, and that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things that we've learned in this process is that not all metrics are created equal. <laughs> Some are a lot better and some are a lot worse. And it really has made us think and start talking out loud about the need to have 90 metrics that are of varying quality, that may or may not be of a lot of use or import to people. Um, it made me reflect on kind of my own uh, memory of the development of the metrics where some of the metrics I feel are a person's own interest. They show up for maybe a week or a month or a couple months just to get the metric done and then they leave. So I think there's a, a lot to wonder about the metrics that we have published. All that said, the metrics certainly represent one of the most fundamental core assets that we have in the chaos project without a doubt. That's where we started back in 2016, hard to believe, um, with metrics and software. So this is these are fundamental parts of what we do. So part of what I, I'd like to talk to this group about is you know, how we continue to think about metrics going forward, how we think about them as being sustainable into the future. Um, like any document, they're hard to maintain and they take a lot of effort. So I'd like this to be a conversation on that. What I'll propose at the beginning, and you can tell me no, you can tell me yeah, whatever, add your own thoughts, is that we start thinking about sunsetting or archiving some of our metrics um, that out of the 90 as displayed on the web page, we necessarily wouldn't display all 90 of those that we focus on quality, not necessarily quantity, as I think Georg has put it in the past. Um, we would be, obviously as part of this process, we would be careful to not necessarily archive or sunset a metric that is part of a metric model, or that is also part of a guide or is necessarily be used, uh, being used in badging. So I'm just, there are probably other situations, but maybe that's it. Um, archival would mean that the web page remains. So the link is still available. It's just not put forward on the web page. Um, so like the link, I should say, but it's not put forward on that, like the list of all metrics. The GitHub markdown remains. Um, again, it's just simply removed from that list on the website and just re-emphasizing that all links would remain intact. So I'll stop there and just kind of see what people's initial reaction is to this. Hi, Kevin. Hi. 
Yeah, I would agree with this. I mean, uh, Peculiar and I were looking at some of the metrics and that's one of the things I noticed when I was looking through um, the process of, you know, them moving some of the metrics into the new template is that there were a lot, the, the quality is a little hit or miss in some of those older, uh, especially some of the older metrics. So I think some of them, the, the quality just, just isn't up to maybe the standards that we have now. And so I think that that some of these metrics, if if the quality isn't good, I think we should move them to an you know an unmaintained sort of archival state. And if if somebody really wants that metric to live, then they can put in the work to bring it up to the quality standards that we have now. And you know, and then we can talk about um, you know moving it back into the into the list. But I think I think the ones that have quality issues, I think we should just you know, if they're not, if they're not being used in any of the other things, then I think we should, I think we should archive them. I think, I think we need to focus on quality over quantity. I'm also on the quality over quantity side of the conversation. My big concern, and I know we already talked about this, is breaking links, banking breaking changes. So if someone has been linking to our metrics, I want to make sure that those continue to work after we archive them and that there is a path forward. But I agree with taking them out of our official metrics release. Yeah, hundred percent. I wouldn't as part of that, like every link it stays, nothing gets put away on GitHub. So I hear your point loud and clear. Yeah, I think we just put a disclaimer at the top that it's no longer no longer maintained and um, no longer being updated or you know some some sort of disclaimer about the quality. And as far as the website goes, we can easily just take off the category of all metrics. Take take off all the categories really, so it wouldn't show up in any. Um, if, if someone's accessing the, the whole list of metrics, it wouldn't show up. It wouldn't show up in any of the categories. It would still show up if there was a search that, that um, you know, was applicable for that metric. So I don't know how y'all feel about that, but um, I personally think that's fine as long as we have the disclaimer on there. That, yeah, this is still here, but it's not, no one's been looking at it, so. Yeah, and I think the disclaimer should mention the quality issues so that people understand that that's why it's not maintained is because there are quality issues with the metric. I missed the first part of this discussion, but it sounds like uh, this aligns with some of the concerns that I've expressed in the past. Okay. Uh, so uh, from what I have heard, I've, I've agreed with everything that was said. I suspect what you're hearing is what you're thinking you're hearing. So do you have, um, like in terms of kind of what we've been talking about so far, so far, do you have any other like thoughts or maybe things that we should kind of keep, keep aware of as we're thinking about this? Kevin, that was for you. Uh, uh, in, in general, I think, uh, to determine whether we quality quality should be a big big indicator of whether we keep the metric. Uh, but I also, I think we should very much focus on metrics that are useful and metrics that are connected to our models and our, our practice guides. And so ideally I'm like, my ideal scenario would be, you know, in the next one or two years, if we could, if we could just create, like figure out around 20 metrics that are just, these are really useful metrics that are connected to uh, our practice guides and our uh, and our models. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we could build from there. But so quality over quantity and, yeah. uh, and maybe moving towards a, a standard metrics release in the future that, it, uh, that could be connected to an ISO metrics release or something along those lines where it's just, these are the 20 key metrics in open source or something. So. I, I, I like that last point. Um, so, so I, I like the idea of actually bringing 
I don't know if this is what you meant, but like bringing back a standard release or whatever. Um, but a but a very limited release, right? Like it doesn't have to be inclusive of every possible metric that can exist. They should be metrics that uh, are very well defined, uh, yeah. and uh, and are connected to the models and practice guides that that we're creating. Yeah, when I like that because if we're trying to keep the the collection of metrics small or and not grow constantly. Um, like the, the one thing that the release was helpful for, I think in the past when we did metrics releases is it was a point in time. It was something that we could promote. It was something that we could talk about. And as we continued to add more metrics, it just became pretty unwieldy, but this might be able to bring that back and say, Hey, every January 1st, we have this release. It's these, you know, 21 metrics, 31, met whatever it might be. Um, and just kind of get them back in front of people. We could that that doesn't even stop us from from defining other metrics, right? So we can we can continue defining other metrics, and then we can make that determination. Like, should this metric that we've we've worked on should it be included in this list of twenty or so metrics that uh, that we consider to be the standard? Right? Yeah, I think so it not it not all the metrics that we define have to be in there. Well, it'd make us very particular probably about what we do define. If somebody's like, hey, <laughs> I have this great idea for a metric and they've just shown up in this meeting once and it might make us think a little bit about it. Um, so metric is, okay. Who added that? I did. Okay. I assumed this was the list of criteria that we will use. Yeah. And if a metric is poorly written, like what we were talking about with the chat inclusivity metric. Yep. Okay. Um, the other nice thing, I think this will allow us to, as we, if we decide what to archive, you know, we, we can identify what's actually being used. It'll give us an opportunity to really hone in on those ones and really ensure their quality. You know, so if we, whatever the, if there's 20 that are being deployed, 30 that are being deployed across these models, guides, and in badging, it'll give us a, a chance to really focus in on those from a, a rewrite perspective in the sense of creating a quality metric. We could also, so if we're, if we're going to do that, we could archive them in place. Like right now they exist inside specific working groups. So we could archive them in that specific working group and only move the, the metrics that we don't want to archive into a new metrics repo, right? So everything else could just be archived in place. We only move 20 or 30 metrics into the new repo. And then have just pointers. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you were like, have like... Sorry. You have like I just wanted one thumbs up for that, but I get, you get a bunch because I totally agree with that, Kevin, 100%. Well, all of our archive metrics could stay exactly where they are, so the links won't change. We just add the disclaimer text to them. Uh, and then for the metrics that would be part of our, like these are the official chaos metrics, we move those to the metrics repo, uh, and then we adjust the website to display those, uh, right? And then the, uh, yeah, so all of our metrics stay where they're at with an okay. archive disclaimer. And then for our new metrics, we basically fork them into a new repo for the, or not our new metrics, but for our standard metrics or the chaos official metrics, we fork them over into a new repo. Yeah, Gary. I have another consideration on the process, how we go about this and yes. adding a step. So one, one is we decide, okay, this metric qualifies to being archived in sunset and then we actually execute maybe we can add a step in between where we say hey we've identified this metric anyone who cares about this metric now is your chance to speak up or hold your tongue <laughs> forever was, no not forever that was i think don that would fit well with what don was saying as well like if somebody wants to step up 
Okay, Don already said it. Sorry, I missed that. No, no, no. She, she had said it, but I think you're putting it as part of a process, which is good. So here, here's what it was. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. That, could, that discussion could also include, you know, discussions about how to improve the quality of the metric, if that's the case. So do we want to archive it? If we don't want to archive it, how do we improve the quality so that... Uh, uh, so that uh, so that we can move it into a, a a metric standard of some sort. I think we do need to be a little bit careful with the process because part of part of the reasoning for some of this is that, uh, in particular, Matt and Elizabeth are pretty overloaded with the whole process of moving things into the new template and doing lots and lots of lots and lots of reviews and. We just don't have as many people working on metrics as we used to. Um, so I think we just need to be careful that we're not adding more process that's going to make this problem worse. I just I just want to put that out there that part of the problem is that we just don't have enough people to do all of this. So we need to be careful not to add too many additional process steps. Mm -hmm. um, like I wouldn't start doing releases again, personally. I think that that adds... I think it takes a lot more time that and people don't really people don't really care as long as they can access the metrics on the website and as long as the metrics are good quality. I don't know. I just think we need to be careful about adding more stuff when the kind of the point of this was to do less. Yeah, actually when I was when I was verbalizing releases, I was almost just thinking like a yearly blog post. It's like here here are here they are, you know. Every year, we'll just let you know that they exist. But yeah, not that whole release process that we've been in the past. Yeah, yeah. and there, there doesn't have to be a cadence on it as well. I mean, we can really just treat it as the, the repository in the metrics repo is the release. So when we move a metric into that repo, it becomes part of our official release, right? So we wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily have to do a regular release or or even any versioning on it. It's just more yeah. the idea that uh, we have one place where we capture kind of the chaos official metrics. Yeah. Uh, and then metrics are kind of metrics can be created and worked on elsewhere uh, and they can be archived. Uh, but they may not necessarily end up in that chaos official metrics repo. Okay. Do we have a number in mind of how many we want to keep in that or around how many we want to limit that to? I don't have any idea right now. I don't I don't think we should limit it. I think we should just we should it should be based on these things that we've talked about above and however many metrics fit into that that's the uh, that's the criteria for belonging to or that official metrics repo, right? Or existing in our official metrics repo. Okay. So if it's a metric that's in a model, then we need to keep it. If it's a metric that's in a guide, then we need to keep it. If it's a metric that's in badging, we need to keep it. Uh, and if the if there's if the, if it's if it has quality, then then we would keep it as well, right? Or or if it's a metric that we want to edit, so that it uh, is is quality, right? If it's an important metric. Um, okay. So then. Uh, yeah, peculiar. I was just going to talk about the process you're working on, but go ahead. Yeah, um, my I want to understand when you say official metrics, official chaos metrics, and then does it mean we have unofficial chaos metrics? So, and does it mean that the official chaos metrics are better than those that will be in the unofficial chaos metrics? So I'm trying to understand and then try to reason how people will see this um, unofficial chaos metrics repo and then official chaos metrics repo. Is it, would, are we going to be telling them, okay, because these ones are official, you have to use it or those in unofficial don't need to use it. So I'm trying to like understand and reason like an outsider. I, I would, any of the metrics. Yeah, that's a good question. I probably wouldn't use official and unofficial as the terms. I would just 
refer to some of the metrics this is my take as archived. And then the others are just, they're all chaos metrics. Some are just in an archive state and some are just in a non-archive state. That's okay. I, I agree with that. I'm sorry about the confusion in the terms that I was using. And the archived ones, they don't move anywhere. They stay exactly where they are. We just put a disclaimer on them. Yep. So then I, Elizabeth, I'm kind of looking at you for this one too, but like process wise with Peculiar and Yiga, I, I think that it's probably still fair to have all of the metrics into the new template. Or what do people think? Or should we try to identify um, the ones that may be candidates for archive first and then say to Peculiar and Yiga, like, don't worry about putting these into the new template. They're, they're archived. We don't need to go through that process. What do people think? Does my question make sense? I think Peculiar can... Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think they've actually done all of that work to move all of the metrics into the new new templates. I think there's still there's a gap. Okay. Now those gap we I've actually like completed them in a doc, just waiting for send more PR. Oh, so you've completed them all? Yes, I've completed them all in a doc. I'm done waiting for St. Pierre. That answers my question. <laughs> uh, do you... Yeah, so I think we might as well. I mean, it'd be good yeah. to have them all in the same template. And I think I... that um, in that PR, we can identify the ones that should be archived and just put the disclaimer on the top. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Peculiar, do you know where Yiga is at? Has, do you know if she's completed hers as well? So I'll confirm that. I'll confirm. Okay. Okay, well then in that case, we'll just continue that process. Um, we'll just continue that process, okay. Okay, um, so I guess a question. Um, sorry, hold on. Um, so are people okay with Elizabeth and myself kind of doing a first pass on what might be archived or would anybody else like to kind of join in that process? I can join in on that process. Uh, if we're working in teams though, I, I would probably need to identify someone to okay. work on that with me. Um, okay. If anyone, if anyone on the call is interested in working on that with me, that would be good. Otherwise, maybe I, maybe I'll reach out to Benad and see if he wants to okay. do this. Okay. So That'd it'd be, be awesome. you and you and Elizabeth. Yeah. Looking through some, and Benad and myself looking through some. That'd be super helpful. <laughs> like, particularly because you and Benad like have a long history with the metrics. Do we um, want to add? Uh, do we want to add us as reviewers to those, or yeah? Um, let me um, I'll as a way to sort through it, or do we want to? Yeah. Of, or do we want to do it kind of more haphazardly? Let me think about that. Or if you have also, thought. also, I I am not volunteering for nod. I will. I know. I will. Re I will reach out to him and ask him if he's, I hope he's okay to right it. now. To be honest with you, has anybody heard from Vanad in the last day or two? I texted him yesterday. He's okay. uh, uh, he's inland, so he's not in the uh, uh, it's not in the Tampa area right now. So okay, uh, I think he's I think he's staying with family. Okay, in, uh, uh, I think he has family. Palm Beach, home. Palm Beach. Okay, yeah. So he's staying with family in Palm Beach right now. So he's not in the uh, the Fort Myers area Tampa area currently. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I was thinking about him the other day. 
Um, so I, I probably need to, Kevin, I'll rethink some of the columns here just so we can track it. If you are able to work with Vinod and then I work with Elizabeth and we do like a signs to it. And then also probably need a column here is like candidate for archival or something like that. You know what I mean? I'll reach out to him and see what he says. If he uh, if he doesn't have the time, then I'll put out an open call on the chaos channel and okay. see if anyone wants to jump in and help. And then I'll probably update, you know, this whole thing. Oh, it changes the color. I'll add one that just says archived so that we can track what we're actually archiving. I don't know what you all think about this spreadsheet, but I actually, I love it still. <laughs> I love it too. It's, uh, and the, but it's, that, it's but super useful. It is. Don't, don't, it is. <laughs> uh, the process that we've outlined kind of, it also kind of outlines a process going forward on how to determine what metrics we want to work on, right? Like, what, are these are these metrics that exist in models? Are these metrics that we need? You got it. Practitioner 100%. guides are these. Yes. Um, yep. In badging. Right. Yeah, because then we're like, okay, we have thirty that qualify as good quality and may or may not exist in some of these things. That that allows us to go back and review those thirty, which is a lot more palatable than reviewing 90. <laughs> and then our metrics are also based on usage, right? And uh and importance. Usage and importance are these are these metrics that are important to people in some fashion. Or are we just or are we just defining them because we can? Yeah, that's always hard mm -hmm. to know that usage. We um who I was talking to, but like sometimes if you archive something and people start complaining, maybe that's the best <laughs> indicator of <laughs> of usage. Agreed. Yeah, Gary. Here's an idea we for estimating usage or importance of metrics. What if we use SCARF to measure that? We have we adopted SCARF for Grimoire Lab, and I still need to check if how how that's going. And we could have a like a tracking pixel similar to Google Analytics on each metric, at least on the website, uh, and then we can see which metrics get accessed how often, and maybe that can give us uh, an an understanding of how often a metric gets called on might be interesting to know. I think Elizabeth, you can get that off WordPress. I think that'd be very interesting to know. Uh, and yeah, we do have views on WordPress um, that we can we can access through Is the knowledge. What would SCARF tell us that's different than that, Garrett? Uh, SCARF would additionally have information on the companies behind. This is if we get a paid membership. Um, otherwise, I they probably just report it differently than WordPress, and they might I, I don't know if it's possible. I think they also allow embedding a tracking pixel on markdown files in GitHub. So we could even see views on GitHub. But I don't know if we care about that because really the released version on the website is what counts. So maybe the WordPress count is enough. Mm -hmm. I think views will be kind of an imperfect look at what we should keep but it might be a good piece of data 
and it, and and it's not the only determination right it's just no. uh, it just adds to our discussion of yeah uh what we should keep and maybe even and maybe even what we should define in the future right if it's if there if there's a metric that is that's used a lot and we have yet to define it maybe we push that uh towards the top of our list mm -hmm. yeah or we see a metric that's a candidate for like in our hearts we're like this is a terrible metric but we see that it's the most viewed metric <laughs> on the page <laughs> that would tell us something spend some time editing it for quality probably so exactly that might tell us a little something yeah i think that's true too of the metrics that are included in things like the practitioner guides if there are any that there are quality concerns then we should just edit those exactly i, I, think... I would say let me know if i'm using any of the metrics and practitioner guides that get flagged for quality because okay. i can since i've already done the work on the practitioner guide it wouldn't be that hard to I just kind of accept the it, metric. Yeah, it's not it. I, I'll be honest with you, as Elizabeth and I have been kind of making some suggested like edits to the metrics, it doesn't take terribly long to like rewrite a few sentences in a description. Like, I think everybody on this call is completely good at doing that type of editing, <laughs> you know, just to kind of get it orderly a little bit. Um, I don't know. I've said a few times it's like rereading like a paper you've written seven years ago <laughs> you read some of your sentences and you're like what is going on <laughs> we were kind of figuring that as we were going when we started defining metrics as well so uh, but yeah for definitely any any metrics that are in the practitioner guides i think those should automatically be we should edit those for for quality to make sure they're we will yeah, uh, for same for same for badging any of our metrics that exist in badging yep. uh we, we need to uh modify those agrees yep agreed matt what do you want to do with the references like should we add reference go ahead and add the references into the ones that are archived i i vote yes but that's yeah, also pretty, time. yeah we could it's pretty easy to do i so, mean someone did the work already to find them so i feel bad if they don't get a student who's been trying to identify references for all of yeah. our metrics I, I would I would uh, I would add just because a metric is archived doesn't mean we can't go back and look at it at a later date. Right? Oh, for so sure. The work has been done, right? So the uh, so maybe maybe these archived metrics are a candidate to be unarchived at a later oh, date, uh, sure. or or edited based on new knowledge at a later oh, date, or 100%. or added when we need them if we start if we need it for a model. Right. So hundred percent. Uh, Everything's got a time and place. Yes. All right, cool. Um, so I'm gonna I will Elizabeth and I I think we'll start kind of doing this and Kevin, I think it's okay if you try to reach out to Vinod and see if he has an interest. Um definitely bring this up in the community call on Tuesday to go, kind of let everybody know where our thinking is around metrics. This is a super productive conversation. So thank you. Elizabeth, did you have any other questions or comments kind of listening to this whole thing? Because you're part of no. this. Yeah, okay. no, I don't think so. I'm, I'm fully on board with all of it. Um, okay. I, I think, and then Matt, you and I today also can kind of smooth out the process of like, Mm -hmm. how how we go about archiving yeah. and what I might want to spend a little bit of time today like this afternoon maybe you and I could take a look at that spreadsheet and just think about what the yeah. columns could be and how we yeah. list things and all that kind of stuff agreed okay well I'm gonna call it a day on the metrics meeting sound good very productive conversation so thank you for that excellent thank you okay um have a good rest of your day everybody Take Talk care. To you later. Thank you. See you in a little bit, Matt. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye.